So just lie flat down onto your back. And then take Supta Baddha Konasana, bring the soles of the feet together, the knees wide apart, and take your arms like cactus arms out to your side. So a lot of the tension that accumulates in the upper back and the neck comes from sitting the way that I'm showing, from the upper back being hunched over, and then needing to look at things, the head will have to like move forward and the upper back stays around. So then the, you can see there's like this disconnect from my upper back and from my head and my neck. So before we start doing anything advanced in yoga, we wanna be able just to get the spine to open up and lengthen. So we're gonna do some things to help to open up and lengthen the spine today, and then do some really nice stretches to help to work out shoulder, upper back, neck kinks. So here we're just allowing the chest to open and allowing the belly to rise and fall with the breath. So this will start to open up the tight chest, the tight hips. All right, so from here, now bring your knees together and take your feet a little apart. And we're just gonna to start to do a little cat-cow movement for the lower back. So as you inhale, arch your lower back. And as you exhale, flatten your lower back down. Inhale, arch your lower back. Exhale, flatten the lower back. Now let your neck start to move with this movement. So as you inhale, arch your lower back and bring your chin into your chest. Do the opposite curve for your neck. Exhale, flatten your lower back, chin away from the chest. It's like a wave going through your spine. Inhale, arch your lower back, chin in. Exhale, flatten the lower back, stretch the chin away. Then come into neutral. And now we're just gonna try to undo that forward neck head carriage that I was talking about. So now gently tuck your chin into your chest and stretch the back of the skull away from your butt and release. We'll do a few more of those. Tuck the chin into the chest and stretch the back of the skull and release. Again, tuck the chin in and stretch the back of the skull. Hold it and release. One more time, tuck chin in, stretch the back of the skull, and release. All right, now let's get a little bit of movement for the hips. So now take the feet just a little bit wider so they're about the width of the mat. And now uh, stretch your arms up and overhead. Turn the thumbs down into the floor, stretch the arms back. and then rebend your elbows. All right, now slide your right knee over towards your left ankle, big toe, and slide just the right arm overhead. Reach that thumb through the floor and stretch down through your hip as you plug from your navel towards your chest and come back up. Change sides, left knee over towards your right foot, stretch the left arm over, and back to center. Inhale, change sides, right knee over towards your left foot, stretch your right arm over. Back to center, change sides, left knee over towards your right foot, stretch your left arm over. And back to center. All right, now bring your knees together in tabletop. So keep the tailbone down. Okay, now here, press your hands into your knees. Press your knees into your hands. It's a little like isometric thing here. So feel the lower back lengthen. Now visualize your spine getting longer. So we want to be able to activate the spinal muscles. That's really important for getting the health of the spine and your core again. You want to think of your core not just as like your six pack muscles, but of the whole spine, the sp muscles that run up and down your spine, your erector spinae. So as you push with your hands into your knees, push with your knees into your hands, and visualize your tailbone lengthening away from you and the crown of the head reaching the other way and all the spine getting long in between. All right, now bring your hands out to your side like a cross position and then spread from your shoulders out into your fingers and then keep lengthening your spine at the same time. 
Visualize the spine getting longer, the chest getting more open, the backs of the shoulders and neck opening through the reach of the fingers. Good, then take your arms up to the ceiling, clasp your hands. All right, and as you inhale, slowly start to reach your arms back towards the wall behind you, but keep, other way, keep your elbows straight and don't let your rib cage tip up. So keep that spine pull long. If the ribs tipping up, then the spine isn't as long anymore, it's arching. Keep the lower back long. Bring your arms back up. And we'll just go back and forth a few times. Inhale to reach the arms back, keep lengthening the spine. Exhale, bring the arms back up. Inhale to reach the arms back, keep lengthening the tail and the crown. Exhale, back up. Change the interlock, other pinky on top. Inhale, reach the arms back. Exhale, back up. Inhale, reach the arms back. Exhale, back up. Last one, inhale, reach the arms back. And exhale, back up. Good, then set the arms down, set your feet down. Hug the right knee into the chest and stretch the left leg out along the floor. Reach through the left foot, descend the left thigh. Change legs, hug the left knee into the chest, stretch the right leg out. Now hug both knees into your chest. Let the lower back spread. Then set your feet down onto the floor. Roll over to your side. Press yourself up to seated and come onto your hands and your knees. All right, so on the hands and the knees, We'll do a couple rounds of cat-cow. As you exhale, round your back and look back at your navel. Inhale, arch your back, especially your upper back, and roll your chest through. Exhale, round your back and look back at your navel. Inhale, arch your back and wheel your chest through. One more time, exhale. Inhale. Good, then come into neutral spine, curl your toes under, and start to sit back into, chair, into child's pose. Sit the hips back to the heels, stretch the arms. Good, then come back up onto your hands and your knees. Position the hands right under the shoulders, the knees right underneath your hips. And without your rib cage twisting, stretch your left arm forward. Then stretch your right leg straight back behind you. Good, firm this left outer hip so that the lower back can lengthen. So your hips, like your center of gravity, if the hips are strong and working properly, it'll help the lower back and the spine to get nice and healthy. Uh -oh. Then lower the hand and the knee back down. Change sides, right arm forward, and left leg back. Firm that right hip, and let the spine lengthen. Then lower your hand and your knee back down and change sides. Lower your hand and your knee back down, change sides. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, change sides. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, change sides. And keep that idea, lengthening through the crown, lengthening through your tail, 
Lower your hand and your knee. Change sides. Lower your hand and your knee. And stretch back into child's pose, this time keeping your toes pointing back. All right, then come back up onto your hands and your knees and come on up to stand. All right, so now stand with your back against the wall. Take your arms into a cactus position. Now take just the slightest back bend into your upper back, like you're trying to lift this part of your chest, the upper sternum towards the ceiling, like it's trying to look up to the ceiling but stretch from your hips down into your heels. Then as you inhale, start to slide your arms up the ceiling. Keep that lift of your uppermost chest. And as you exhale, rebend your elbows out to the side. Inhale, slide your arms up to the ceiling. Keep that lift of your uppermost chest. Exhale, rebend your elbows out to the side. Inhale, slide your arms up to the ceiling, keeping that lift of your uppermost chest. Exhale, bend your elbows out to the side. Couple more times. So these exercises that we're doing are great if you have like a kinked upper back or neck. If you wake up with a stiff neck and you're not sure why, this is a great way to relieve some of this tension, the sequence today. All right. Then bring the arms to your side and we're gonna do a couple of neck rolls. So step off of the wall, roll the shoulders back and then roll your right ear towards your right shoulder. And then chin towards your chest. And left ear to left shoulder. Chin to your chest. Right ear to right shoulder. And keep the upper collarbones broad. And chin to chest. Left ear to left shoulder. And back to your chest. Bring the head up on top. Okay, now for this one, it's gonna get kind of weird. It's gonna feel like it'll create more tension at first, but it'll help to relieve if you have like a strained upper trap neck situation. So take your shoulder heads, lift them up, then drop them back. Then chin up to the ceiling, roll your right ear over to your right shoulder, and tip the head up to the ceiling. And then come back to center. Roll the shoulders up and back. Roll the left ear to the left shoulder. Tip the head up, look up. And bring it all back. So you can do that as many times as you need to until you feel the kink in your neck start to get worked out. And if your upper back and neck don't feel really good after having done all that stuff, then you can just add a few more rounds, get it to open up better. Okay, now let's practice child's pose again. Come onto the hands and the knees. Okay, so for this child's pose, this is kind of gonna be like a hybrid child's pose down dog. So come back up onto your hands and your knees and maybe uh, Stacy scoot back a little bit so you have room for your hands. So keeping your hips stacked over your knees, start to walk your hands forward. So we're just like eliminating weight bearing on the arms so we can just work on opening. And it's just a little bit of weight bearing, still working the turn of the upper arms Lengthen through the upper spine. And then visualize the spine getting longer. Don't let it round anywhere. Don't let it sink anywhere, but just nice and long from your tail to your crown. And you can see like Stacy wants to round a little bit here. So she's gonna try to unround that part of the spine. Look at how easy that moves for you, geez. Wish my spine moved like that. Okay, then come back up onto your hands and your knees and slide your um, we're gonna go into side plank position now with the right knee down. So right hand, right knee down. Open up to your side, left leg stretches back. Bring the left hand to the hip at first. Okay, so your nerves for your arms, they all start here in the back of the neck. So I want you to visualize from this plexus of nerves, from the back of the neck, you're stretching from there down through your shoulders, down into your fingers, and especially ground your middle three knuckles and spread your hand. Then lengthen the neck. 
like you got pulled, like you're in some type of medieval traction device getting longer. And that will also help in, help, help in, that, that's not a word, that will help the neck to open up, the, the joints for the neck, and it will help the arm to relieve tension because a lot of the tension that you feel in your upper back is coming from this neck getting crunched. So lengthen the neck, lengthen through your middle three knuckles, and then take your left arm up. If you're very tight back there, like I get from paddling, you might even start to feel like tinglys because it's not used, the nerves aren't used to getting pulled that long. They're used to getting bunched up and hunched over. All right. Then if you want to make it a little more challenging, add a little strength to it, lift your left leg up an inch, but keep all, don't lose any of that opening, the left leg. Oh. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Even the professionals get a little confused sometimes. So if you're at home and you get confused, you have to look at the screen, don't worry. Okay, lower your foot back down, lower your left hand down, and left knee down. All right, great, now let's open up to the other side. The left knee down, left hand down. Bring the right hand to the hip. So this is good, because you're getting like an opening for your left hip here, and then we're gonna work from the back of the neck all the way down into the fingers. Stretch the middle three knuckles, open the upper chest, let the head lean back like, like you're up against the wall right now. And then stretch the back of the skull, buttocks, root those middle three knuckles, and then take the right arm up. Good, keep all that space there. Okay, now it's good to challenge your body by trying to move things while you're practicing stability and creating space. So this next part, see if you can lift that right leg without the neck bunching up. The neck, is because it's used to being bunched up, will try to bunch back up to lift the leg. Don't let it. And if you feel it bunch up to lift the leg, set the foot back down, and then mindfully take the leg back up again. It might like the name of the video today, the mindful yoga. Okay, then lower the foot back down, lower your hand back down, and stretch back to child's pose. Ah, let the neck release. The shoulders open again. Okay, good. Then lie down onto your back. And for this next thing, for this psoas stretch, you're gonna need a block. If you don't have a block, you could put a firm pillow or bolster underneath your hips, but a block really works good. You're gonna lift your butt up and slide your block underneath your sacrum. That's the thick part right at the top of your butt. The pelvis goes into neutral, the arms go at your side. Okay, now it's really important in this part, if you visualize where your sit bones are, you want them both to stretch evenly out of your lower back. And then without the pelvis twisting at all, like I put quarters on each of your hip bones, start to slowly stretch the right leg out. But don't let the pelvis twist at all. Yeah, see how slow Stacy's going? to get, make sure that she doesn't just whip the leg out. I, I see that all the time when I show people this. They want to whip the leg. Don't whip the leg, otherwise you'll lose the integrity of the pelvis. And remember, this being like our center of gravity, if this twists, then the whole spine twists. So we want to keep the pelvis nice and even as you're stretching. Then your psoas, you want to visualize the psoas as a muscle that runs, and I'll, I'll show it from this strap, from the inside of your femur bone, <clears throat> lesser trochanter inside of the femur bone, up into the side of the spine. So if it gets very tight, it's gonna like wanna pull your spine one way or the other, make you twist, make you overarch, make you tuck. So we wanna get this muscle to start to lengthen out through here. So you can even use your breath because it attaches at the bottom of your diaphragm too. As you breathe deeply, you can stretch from the belly of the muscle, the center of the muscle, which would be represented on the strap. Here's one end, here's the other end. Right here, like just below your navel, stretch in opposite directions there. Stretch from the center out through your foot and lengthen out through your head. Good, so it's very subtle. You're not gonna feel like intense sensation. Rebend your right knee, unless it's very tight, then you might. And slowly start to stretch your left leg out. And just hold there for a minute, doing the psoas stretch. So 
So use your breath and elongate from the center of the muscle. Always when we go for a deep stretch, we want to feel the belly of the muscle, the middle of the muscle stretching, not near the attachments. When you feel that the attachments pulling, that's a sign that you're getting into the connections, the ligaments, the tendons, and that's not a good idea to try to pull on those things because they're plastic. Once they stretch, they don't go back. The muscle will give and move along with the fascia, but not those connections. Don't want to be pulling into those. That's how we actually injure the body when we're trying to stretch. And overstretching can cause just as much injury as any sport or activity. So we want to be mindful when we're stretching to be stretching in a healthy manner, not overdoing. On a scale of one to 10, you're looking for like a five with the stretch. In the Yoga Sutras, it says that we're looking for a steady quality in the asana, a firm yet relaxed, steady quality. If you're like going to a 10, that's not very steady. This too much. Okay, so rebend your knee and now lift your buttock up off of there and move the block out to the side and lower your buttock down. Okay, now let's take the right leg up in the strap. So first, keeping the idea of what we learned with the hips, without the hips twisting, bring the right knee towards your chest. When the right knee comes towards your chest, if you just try to jam it to your chest, your hips will twist, your lower back will twist. Instead, think of both sit bones, buttock bones, reaching out of your lower back as the knee comes in. So then you can see Stacy can't pull the knee in as far. That's okay. Then she's gonna take this right leg up in the strap, but she'll keep practicing that action of keeping the hips released. And then she's gonna start to slowly extend the right leg maybe all the way. It doesn't have to go all the way, depending on how tight the hamstrings are. So she's like mimicking someone who's a little more, who's more, who has less hamstring mobility than herself, which is very good. It's a good teaching technique. Thank you, Stacy, for demonstrating that. Then she slowly starts to stretch the left leg out, but without losing this neutrality of the pelvis. Think of the pelvis, it's like Switzerland. It has to stay neutral because there's a lot of money involved. With the pelvis goes weird, then the whole lower back, it would get very expensive. Okay. Stretch through the left leg, descend the left thigh. And if you're tighter in your hamstrings, you can allow the leg not to come so close or work with a bent knee. In either one, you're stretching your hamstrings. And you want to feel that, you feel all the hamstrings stretching, all the back of the leg stretching evenly. Okay, re-bend that knee and slowly change legs. I often get people messaging me on the comments like, I can't get my legs straight in this. Well, it, that's, not the, that's not the aim to get your legs straight. The aim is to stretch your hamstrings. So whatever you have to do to keep the pelvis even and then slowly start to stretch the bottom leg out. Based on your genetics, you might not ever be able to get the hamstring perfectly straight like Stacy does. Um, or, you know, maybe if you start practicing like six days a week, then eventually the legs will get straight if you do it mindfully and slowly and don't force your way into it. Both of Stacy's parents are dancers too, so you take that into consideration. She's got these dancer genetics where she came out of the womb just doing head to knee pose and stuff and things like that, so. All right, then re-bend the knee and set your foot down. Open up your arms out to the side. Cross your right ankle over your left knee. Okay, now slowly start to take your legs over to the left. If you're very tight in your hips, I'd recommend putting a prop under the foot so that you twist less. Why? Because if you think about your sacral joints, they're gonna wanna give up and the stretch will just go into your joint instead of feeling the stretch into your hip muscle. So we wanna feel that the hip muscle is opening along with the muscles in your back instead of going into the joints. So someone who is newer to yoga, someone who is less flexible, their leg will just fall over because they don't have the control and then they'll feel it go into their joints. So instead, we can move ourselves out of the pose a little 
so that you feel it into the place you're looking for. Like in your hip, you feel your spine twisting evenly, that's what you're looking for. And then to help, if you breathe your spine longer when you're doing this, like you actively stretch your hips out of your lower back and out through your crown, that'll also help to ensure that you get the stretch into the muscle properly. And then let the uh, opposite shoulder, the right shoulder drop down and spread. Then slowly bring your legs back, uncross, change sides. And you know, once you start doing this sequence more regularly, take the legs over to the right. Once you start doing the sequence more regularly, then you know, eventually you'll take the block away. Or if you're very tight, you take the block higher and then work it lower. Feel that left shoulder release back down and spread and keep actively stretching your hips out of your lower back. Good, then bring your legs back to center. Hug your knees into your chest. Then roll over to your side. Let's do the finishing sequence now. Press yourself up to seated. Sweep your legs around, lie down onto your belly. <clears throat> Put your hands next to your waist, roll your blades onto your back, and then start to roll your chest forward and up and back down. Three times. Inhale, come up. Now work your upper back. Turn the blades onto the back, pull your chest string forward, exhale, lower back down. The inner thighs spin up, the outer thighs turn down, and the buttocks stretches out of the lower back. Lift from your belly and roll the chest up again, and stretch the elbows back, stretch back through your toes, lower back down. The last one will hold, roll yourself up. Now visualize your shoulder blades in your mind's eye coming onto your back, down your back, so that the chest spreads, and lower back down. Good. Then <clears throat> stretch back into child's. And then come into Dandasana. Seated stick pose. It's called seated stick, seated staff, because the spine should be upright like a staff, and the legs eventually. So I'm mimicking someone who has very, a very tight back body, like myself, mimicking myself here, um, <clears throat> where if you try to sit in this position, the spine gets all pulled back and under. Versus Stacy, she's able to sit upright, right up over her sit bones. So someone like me could put a block underneath their butt or could bend the knees so that they can look more like this. So I'm gonna do both, a little bend in the knees and a block. Now visualize, go inward. Important to be able to visualize things in your body. Your sit bones, ischial tuberosity, the little bones at the bottom of your butt that you're supposed to be able to sit on, often get trained to tuck under. So we're just reaching both sit bones straight down into the floor instead of tucking and then growing as tall as we can up over the sit bones. And already, man, I've been like all hunched over while teaching this stuff. And this feels so much better to sit in this position. It's a very powerful position. All the organs are nice and upright, so we have nice flow of fluids through the body now. The body is a more efficient pump when you're able to have good posture. Otherwise, there's lots of strain on the front, from the front body on the organs, so then things can't work properly. So a lot of the organic body can be influenced by our posture. Okay, that felt really nice. Now, we're just gonna do this in a more relaxed variation, which is just legs up the wall. So, you're going to take your buttocks close to the wall, not all the way up against the wall, especially if you're like me, and then just, uh, you sit with your hip, you know, you just lay legs up the wall. You don't need to explain that. Just legs up the wall. Okay, so, um, 
so since Stacy is very mobile, she can take her butt pretty close to the wall and the legs will relax into the straight position. But for me, like how I was showing, how I was all tucked under, I would give myself maybe like a, a, a block's distance, six, eight, 12 inches away from the wall so that the legs can release nicely. It's, you're not trying to jam yourself into stretches. If you try to jam yourself, your body too quickly again, things pull, get torn, so we don't want to do that. And this is just about relaxing. So this is a great pose to practice before you go to sleep at night. If there's just one pose that you have time to do, this is the go-to one. You just lay with your legs up the wall. It's really good for the muscles in your legs. Um, it's like teaching you the in, a base, very basic inversion. So we're just going to finish in Shavasana like this today. I'll stop talking. I'll let you relax and go inward. So as you start to relax in this position, just visualize as you're relaxing, visualize that the breath can become more rhythmic and can start to slow down. And as you relax your body, notice what's happening with the breath. So the yogis were trying to determine, like, what can we have influence over? What should we try to influence? What shouldn't we? And, and they found <clears throat> that by doing certain positions of the body, we could have some influence over the organic body or the organs and their functions. But then also over the nervous system, over the uh, autonomic, auto, autonomic nervous system. And, by, and that's through the breath. So we're starting to activate the parasympathetic nervous system by allowing yourself to slow down. And that's a lot of the benefits you hear from yoga are from this, from, from that parasympathetic response, the rest to digest response calming, where your body can start to heal itself. And it comes from this deep sense of calm and relaxation that comes after you practice. Sometimes, like even when you go to bed at night, your mind is racing because of what you've been doing. The body still feels like it's in like almost a, a fight or flight response because of the activity of the mind. So just feel how calm you feel, how calm the mind and the body feel together after having done some nice stretches and by actively allowing yourself to slow down and let the breath slow down. Feel how the mind is stilled from the breath. All right. Then bend your knees and roll over to your side. And press yourself all the way up to seated. All right. I thank you for practicing today. Sit up tall with your eyes closed. Feel how good the body feels. Feel the quality of the mind, the shift that comes at the end of the practice. Lower your head to your heart. Lift your head and open the eyes. Namaste.